Welcome to the Ray Bros Nerd Show. I'm your host, Jonathan, with my brother, Zach. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 15, Turning Japanese. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was thinking about entering like the song, like, Turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. Japanese. I really think so. But I'm like, isn't that song about not what we're going to cover? <laughs> like, it's about something fucked up, I think. Yeah. It's, it's about him like loving all Japanese girls or something like that. No, I, I think it's about him. We're not. We're not going <laughs> to do this. We're not going to do this. <laughs> this is a very adult podcast, but we're not going to get that far well, you, into you, it. You do bring up a point that like we really need to make a theme song somehow. Yeah, we need a theme song. Well, for we the have podcast. our outro. We have two outros now. I think we have the, either the no, no <laughs> or the <laughs> the stupid drums, which was last time. Anyway, so. A couple, it's funny, Zach brought it up to me, and it, you can list off the games better than I can, but he's like, Japan's had a strong outing when it comes to gaming, when it has came, come to gaming in the last couple months, because you have what? Mm -hmm. Alright, so, some of these I haven't played, they've gotten good reviews, and like, will be eventual plays, like, in the summer when things dry up, but like, and this isn't just like an annual thing, so it's not like 2016, just, or whatever, it's... 2017? No, I'm saying 2016 and 2017. Oh, okay. I'm saying it's going to be both years. John, thank you. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Um, so, you got Final Fantasy 15 came out, which I loved it. Um, most of the industry seemed to love it. Like, it sold it, which was crazy. That game was in development for 10 years. Somehow, that means it must have been on the back burner for a while because somehow it cleared its cost to make in the first 24 hours oh nice which nice. that must have meant like there was like some back burner or like mm -hmm. certain parts fed into other projects i don't know um so you had final fantasy 15 um i didn't play it i won't play it a lot of people seem to like it but a lot of people seem to hate it was um the new uh last guardian oh yeah I heard it just controls like garbage, man. Mm -hmm. Like the little, because it has that stupid little dog. I guess, like the gameplay is still what it is, which I think is really nothing. But yeah, I guess the controls are messed up, and that like to me like that could be like a, a something that just kills the game. Yeah, but it, it's one of those things where people, if you they like the eco and Shadow of the Colossus, then they're gonna like this. Yeah, yeah, blindly. Like it, it won't matter if the dog literally doesn't listen to you because that's more like a real pet. I don't give a shit. It's not a real animal, and this is a video game. Yeah, listen to me when I tell you to go somewhere. Damn you, Tamagotchi. Yeah. Um. So you got that. I'm probably gonna leave some off just because I'm not gonna remember if my phone's charging, so we can play Jackbox later. Um. So you had Last Guardian, then you had Resident Evil Seven. All right, which John loved. Like it's not my thing. Like. Which a lot of people gave pretty fair, better, it's weird because people gave it better scores than I did, and it's weird mm -hmm. because, like, I mean, I don't like the score-based system really anyways, like, but I'd like to try to give, like, a generalization, but I was like, I think it's a 7, and then, like, a lot of YouTubers or a lot of reviewers, like, 8, 9, 10, I was like, it's probably because you all got free goodie bags and I didn't, so I'm, I'm revolting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Resident Evil 7 came out, like... Oddly, and it's still trending this way, highest scored Resident Evil since 4 and worst selling since 4 as well. Yeah. Um, which is real weird. Like, that doesn't even make me happy because I wish it sold better than at least 6 because that was garbage. Um, so then you also had this one technically, once again, this is strictly American releases. So Yakuza 0. That game's killing it. That yeah. game's getting awesome reviews. Me and my brother are loving the show. I love it. it. Yeah, we're going to cover that a yeah, lot. Probably. We're going to get back to that. <laughs> um, another one that came out that will definitely probably end up being a summer game for me um, is Tales of Berseria. Uh, I think I've never heard of that. Oh, man. The Tales series is awesome. It's an old series. There's like 19. Is it like Tales 16? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> Tales fan who are you <laughs> Tales the Tales series is like a JRPG series where it's like combo based uh, combat but it's still it's all it's really a lot like the combat and stuff in Final Fantasy 15 except for it literally does pull you into a separate it's Yakuza it's yeah. the Yakuza thing where you see enemies you can run up to them 
you get in a fight, you do the fight, and then it opens the open world back up to you. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like Yakuza, uh, but JRPG, so, you know, that kind of art style. Oh, okay. Is it turn-based or no? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. For some reason, every time I think of JRPG, I think those are more of the strictly turn-based ones. You know what I mean? For some reason. Which is weird, because you know JRPG, you know what that means, right? Japanese role playing game? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it comes from Japan. It's a <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like, I thought typically a JRPG game is turn based. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's what your brain associates it with. But yeah, like, when you got games like Final Fantasy out there, Yakuza is an RPG. The Tale series, that's yeah. an RP JRPG. Like, um, so you had that. Um, the one that I'm absolutely just in love with. Yeah. Right now is Neo. Um, so you got that. Uh, as John pointed out, or he hasn't pointed out, he told me about. I don't, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> Kingdom but Hearts. But the Kingdom Hearts that got re the it's like it's an HD remake of two a movie a, a 3DS mobile game. game a mobile game like, and he hasn't even touched the first one ever like no. Which I I thought because it's a prequel I could start here, but I've started playing the game and I'm a little confused. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that game it's almost like. Because how are you gonna put the word prologue? Because doesn't you, the word prologue mean before? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it, like they're calling it prologue, whatever, because it's before three, which is gonna come out probably in 2019. But that's such a misrepresentation because a prologue should be before the entire series, not. No, I should say a prequel like, would be before the entire series. A prologue is before a single story. So even a third book, like, I read the Expanse series of novels. Mm -hmm. Each book starts with a prologue. Oh, okay. So I, I, see, I see what you mean, but I think the exact definition is just a, a preamble to a single story. That's specific stories, yeah. Anyways, um... So those that remake's coming out, and it and it bummed me out too because he's talking about like he got it and like I wish which came with a free collector pen. I should have sent him a picture of my face when he sent me the picture of the game. Because do you even like Disney stuff? We weren't raised on Disney. I kind of do. Like I like the idea of it. Like you I want don't know. you want Monica to watch you play it. I mean that's a part of it. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that. I can understand that. But plus I I like. You know, that some of the fantasy world, I just think it'd be cool, like, to be Donald Duck in a game, just because, like, I don't know. <laughs> Donald Duck, kicking ass. My brother is, like, looking at me embarrassingly. Like, exactly. <laughs> this is a grown man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but me, I... I, I haven't pushed I got... it on him, to be fair. I haven't pushed it on you. Well, that's because as soon as you, like, sent me the picture, <laughs> I was like, go fuck yourself and I even, die. I, I think even in my context of the text, I knew what was going to happen, so I think I put, I don't know what I did, and I sent him a picture yeah. of him. <laughs> And immediately I'm like, and you didn't play Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Which, once again, I bring up my, our, you know, the past, the problem I have where I'm super excited about a game, and then I, like, Something happens and it drops off. off. Yeah, I still think about Final Fantasy 15. I'm, I'm. You I'm, moved on, but you haven't forgot about it. Well, way. I have the season pass, oh, but okay. I had a physical copy. Oh. Once all the DLC is out, I'm gonna pick that back up. Again. Pick it back up yeah. because it has stayed in my brain, and I, I love those characters. And I remember yeah. the story. I love the way the artwork changed once you completed the story. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I just was noticing that like I feel like last generation um and also pretty soon um Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is coming out yeah and I think a trend with like most of these games that we're talking about um Japan struggled last generation like whether it was the Wii and the Wii U and like most of the third party you know games that Japan released it was rough. There mm -hmm. wasn't. They didn't sell well. There wasn't a lot of interest. Like plus, some of them were like more priced than a typical game. Because there's this one, I can't remember what it's called, but I went to GameStop a few days ago, and on the back it looked like something I'd be interested. In. 
And then I looked at the price, and it's a Japanese game, you know. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the price, it was like seventy four ninety five, and it was like a standard of whatever it was. What system is it? PS4, if I remember correctly. And I was just like, what? I'm like, why is this, like, cost more? I'll have to look it up again, or, like, maybe go back and just, like, send you a picture of it, because it, like, blew my mind. I'm like, why does this cost more than, like... I know that, like, to ship a game overseas, it costs, you know, yeah. extra money, but typically, even then, like, we still have to pay the base price of, like, $60 or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it still it ends up balancing out. Yeah. Do you remember what the artwork looked like at all? Uh, it looked like, um, almost like Final Fantasy, uh, jeez, Advent, not Advent Children, but it looked like the cartoon type Final Fantasy type artwork instead of like the adult version did it have like a girl's face on the cover i think so that's probably tales of bursaria oh really why and is that like why is that probably so the collector's edition did no. you read the sticker yeah it just looked like this was the standard edition because they can fit the whole tales of bursaria on there but if it said like tales of bursaria co- maybe co- I, maybe i missed on that because i was like wondering like why it looked more expensive than or why it was more expensive than yeah, I want to look into it, because if they have a collector's edition available for it, I might buy it. It's at the Valpo one. <laughs> tax return Which season. helps nobody listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, Japan struggled last console generation. Um, obviously, they killed it in the PS2 era, like, but PS3, 360, they just, they floundered. A lot of the big studios just weren't delivering, like, they didn't have fresh ideas, they were stuck in the past. They wanted to put those Plinko machines. Yeah, Pachinko. <laughs> yeah, and Pachinko. That Konami, <laughs> Konami all up in this B. Um, but, like, you look at Breath of the Wild coming out for the Nintendo Switch and the Wii U, it you can see how many cues they took from The Witcher and Skyrim, like Western RPGs, and putting it into the their, Zelda their game, stuff, yeah. Which makes it, for like a lot of modern gamers, like really exciting. Like, this is different and yeah. fresh. Which, my one argument about that, which was, it was more funny than anything, because I was talking to somebody, like, one of my friends that follows Zelda, I'm like, technically the first Zelda, if you think about it, is more open world, but it's stuck on a Nintendo... It is, it was an open world game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. stuck on a Nintendo <clears throat> platform, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> like, the other ones, like, it was an open world per se, but, like, it has set stage, but the original Zelda... Mm-hmm. You know, it was open world because you went to like water place, you know, you went underground through caves and all these different things, you yeah, know, stuff like and, that. I mean, you can go in any direction. Like, yeah. It tells you where to go, like head north to the castle or whatever, and then that's when you Yeah, know, it's just like a subtext. Taken. Yeah. <laughs> but you can go anywhere. You can start anywhere. You're going to get your ass kicked. Yeah. So, like, that's why, like, not to, like, go against what you're saying, like, some people are like, oh, this is all brand new, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, eh, not technically. <laughs> you know Yeah, I mean? it's, it's, it's like, not brand new for the series technically, but... But it's, like, a refreshing, yeah, you know? Yeah, <laughs> because I've been playing Twilight Princess. Which I never, I never played On the Wii one. U. Yeah. It came out for the GameCube and the Wii. And... I don't... It's that's, they HD remade that one, too, that's, for the Wii U. That's yeah. the one, because, yeah, I picked up a Wii U... Were pretty cheap and did, did you get the one with the amiibo in it with the little i dog? thought about it yeah but i'm like i don't have amiibo well we have one in here but <laughs> yeah i was like i don't like the the thing i wish i would have known though is like with that wolf amiibo yeah if you have the game inside the like you know tray and because what i've been doing with that game is like 30 minutes before bed i'll play it in bed on the game pad for yeah. like a half hour you know, get work, you know, however far I can get and then save, save you know, it. and then just put it next Somewhere. to my bed. Yeah. Um, but if you had the Wolf Amiibo that it came with, like the system could be, you just hit the power button, you plop that thing on there with your save file tied to it, and it just loads up your game immediately. Really? You don't have to click into the game, you don't have to hit start at the That's main weird. menu, yeah. you don't have to select your save. That's just... very unique, because usually Amiibos, no offense, they really don't do anything, <laughs> like, because no. I have a couple of them, My, mainly the ones I have, uh, which is funny, we didn't even talk about talk about this, um, but mainly the ones I have is because I like the style that they're in, Yeah. like I have uh, Super Mario, it's the old pixelated one, but yeah. it's like built like a brick or mm-hmm. whatever, and I'm like, oh, that one's cool, and then Monica, she likes the uh, woolly... Yoshi's mm-hmm. and so which is cool because like they're made out of the wool still but like still has that sensor at the bottom of them or yeah. whatever and I think like the other one is like uh, 
not a Bowser, just like some other like random character that I mm-hmm. like, you know. But I don't really. They don't serve a purpose like that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and I didn't know about like, because I was at Video Palace looking, and they had the pre-owned for forty-five, and they had the new with that amiibo for sixty. And I'm just staring at it. I'm like, Do I need that? Do I need that? And then also, like, what if I don't like it? Also, Breath of the Wild's coming out for the Wii U. And it was more like, I just wanted a game that I could immediately get mm-hmm. into. Because we got that, and then we got Mario World, so I could play with Emily. Yeah. Um, but I'm already, like... Uh, I, I It's not a bad game. But it hasn't age like Very the well. old Zeldas or like A Link Between Worlds or A Link to the Past I always get the two mixed up it's A Link Between Worlds I believe on the 3DS which is like a remake of A Link to the Past that game is like an awesome Zelda game that was the only game I beat on the 3DS when I had my 3DS I yeah. was hooked on that game because the top down old school Zeldas just work they're just awesome mm-hmm. Ocarina of Time was awesome like one of the only N64 games I beat it was awesome for the time now it's fucking boring as dog shit <laughs> but watch out Nintendo fanboys might be listening I don't like <laughs> and that's fine like I haven't owned a Nintendo console yeah even when you were telling me about the Wii U like it was so funny because I've I've had one for a while like Monica got it for me for my birthday like years ago, but it was still on the cheaper end or whatever mm-hmm. because she knew she knows I like a lot of Nintendo stuff like Nintendo uh, characters or whatever, mm-hmm. um, IPs or whatever you want to call it. And uh, my brother was texting me. He's like, "Give me like a top ten game oh, list or something." God. He's like, "Give me a top ten list of your opinion, like um, of games that I should get for the Wii U." So the first thing I did is, uh, well, I was driving at the time, so I told him, like, wait till I get home because I want to look through my games mm. so I can make some suggestions. So I was looking through my games, and I gave him the suggestions I thought were fair, you know, Mario Party, all these different ones. can't remember everything on the list. It was probably the main ones most people say. I might have added in one or two that were unique to me or whatever. Like Rabbids. Yeah, like Raven Rabbids too. It's not bad. It's a good party game. See, but that's the thing, like... I know. I, but, did, I didn't want to buy a bunch of party games for only two people. Yeah. Well, and it then, can work. It can work. Anyways, <laughs> that was unique to me, but it was funny. Like, I sent him this list, and he's just like, oh, God, I don't even want the Wii U at all. <laughs> it was more or less like I'm immediately regretting my decision. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. my list, and it's not a bad, it wasn't like it was a bad list. Like, I told him, like, Go pet my panda too. Go buy that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was like one of those things. He's like, none of those interest me. And I'm just like, I, I did the best I could. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't like an insult to him. It was just like, I was like, maybe this system really isn't for me. But yeah. then I was like, you know what? I haven't played on a Nintendo console. For real. Like, I never touched a GameCube. I think I might have played it at a kiosk, demo yeah, kiosk. I, don't, I, I played Animal Crossing at Tad's house with his brother Kaz. The one that whispers all the time when he talks. <laughs> no <laughs> offense, guys. I apologize. <laughs> What's up, man? He's a whisper talker. It's, this is just the truth. <laughs> but we played that for a little while, and he was telling me how when you turn off your system, turn it back on, like real time things. Yeah, if it's you real keep... time. Yeah. And that's holidays and everything. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. I was like, but how's the game? I'm like, I don't care about the time. How's the game itself? You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's like a but weird that was Animal it. Sims. Like, yeah. literally, that was it. Like, the GameCube, like, I always wanted to have it because I think it looks so, like, weird and unique, you know? Yeah, it's a... And it's not even technically a cube. That's the fucked up thing. You're, did you hear about that? Mm. The dimensions of the GameCube are not a cube. They're what? not even... Oh. Like, a cube has to be squares all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's hard. <laughs> well, my thing about that, the reason why I like it as more of like a collector's item yeah, is because, handle. well, not only the handle, but <laughs> this is when everything, everybody thought CDs were going to turn to mini disc. Yeah. So the GameCube released their games on mini disc because they thought 
this is going to be new, this is going to be awesome, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Well, people were like, no, we're actually going digital. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like or not digital, but DVD. Yeah, or you just use it still the DVD format or the Blu-ray p- format or whatever. Because PlayStation 1 was CD. Early PS2 started out CD, and then it turned into DVD because it had mm-hmm. a DVD player. Yeah. Um, the cheapest DVD player you could get at the time. And then PS3 was Blu-ray. And fucking... GameCube's just trot along. <laughs> yeah. And then Wii U finally became Blu-ray. Like, after PS3 was already Blu-ray for... What? Yeah, because the Nintendo Wii... Years? The Nintendo Wii wasn't even Blu-ray. It was no. still DVD. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't even play DVDs on the damn thing. Yeah. Isn't that messed up? Like, I don't know. Like, as much as people... Pra- or as much as people bought the Wii... Like, to me, it like, beyond, like, some of the games, I'm like, it doesn't have, like, and this is on Xbox and uh, PS3, I'm like, it doesn't have DVD capability playback, mm-hmm. you know, all that extra stuff that you would get, like, the internet connection, like, even on the PS3 at 360, yeah. was awesome compared, like, this isn't the fashion Nintendo by any means, but... It is. <laughs> it like, kind of is, but... <laughs> and and that's what, that's why I bought a Wii U. Yeah. The reality of why I bought a Wii U... Is because I saw the Switch announcements, and I listened to people who actually touched it and played it, and I was like, "Oh fuck, this isn't gonna sell." You don't. Th- Who's well, gonna the, buy this? People, it is. It's already sold out pre-order wise. Like, but they, but there wasn't that many. Yeah. Like that's the but thing. But they did, did that fake, fake. Uh, how many there are available? Yeah. Type thing. I can't remember what the terminology for it is. But also, you got to figure like the PS4 and Xbox One. Those didn't sell out of pre-orders because they made, like, hundreds and thousands of them. Yeah. Not, you know, thousands. Just yeah. Just, like, a few thousand. And my thing is, this one guy pissed me off. He's like, at least Nintendo's trying to do something new and fresh. I'm like, no, what, that not. nobody wants? <laughs> but they're, they're not. But the perfect explanation for the Switch that I saw was, like, this meme online where it was, like... What should we do to, like, change the Wii... Or, what should we do to make the, uh... A new Nintendo console? And they showed the Wii U gamepad. And the picture. And then it just shows where the screen cuts off. They put two lines down. The two controllers, yeah. The two controllers pop off. <laughs> and then you have the screen, the two controllers. That's the you're fucking good. Nintendo Switch. Yeah, you're done. That's true. Yeah, that's funny. So they're not doing anything new. They're yeah. not doing anything different. They're once again like, it's fine if their consoles are weaker, but once again, you need third party support. The Wii U died because game developers couldn't put their games on the system. Yeah. Like, and now, like, oh, one of your big titles you're touting is Skyrim. Uh, close to ten year old game at this point. Yeah, that we already have like each HD remakes and... on PS4 and <laughs> Xbox One. Like, and the only game that's like really big that's coming out at launch is Breath of the Wild, which is also coming out to Wii U. And the only difference is audio. Yeah, you told me about that. That's so funny. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but to bring some light into the world, Japan is doing great. Is doing great. Nintendo. <laughs> Is they're doing their thing. Hopefully, Breath the, of the Wild is awesome because I just pre ordered I, I almost it. like it because, like, you all, like, not in like, 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 but it's like you just know what to expect at this point. Like, we're just gonna do our own thing, man. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like this, this could be the best thing to happen because if the Switch fails, they stop making hardware, they start becoming the fucking publisher they need to be, pumping out games for the Xbox One and the PS4. The, you know what they're gonna do. And, and I hate to say it, but they're going to do the mobile first. They're going to go mobile first. They're already first. doing it. Oh, well, I know that. I have I'm Fire saying, Emblem like, Heroes on my phone right now. They're, they're going to increase it. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of, like, or even come out with their own cell phone. No, I, if you take that idea, you motherfuckers. No, that'll <laughs> fail just like the Sony phone did. The Sony phone? Oh, God, I remember that thing. The, yeah, you could play Crash Bandicoot on your phone. Like, you slid it up and it had triangle, circle, yeah. X, square. I think they sold like 500 of them. <laughs> I kind of want one now that I'm thinking about it. But anyways, the game I, uh, my brother and I talked about highlighting is Yakuza 0. I'm behind of what my brother has been playing. Because like, excuse me, he's the one who kind of talked me into getting it. Excuse me, I'm burping like a crazy madman. Um, I had this like Chinese today and I don't know. And it's still just sitting it, it's there. Just, just, We're not going to talk about the name of it. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, anyways... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, oh, okay. Anyways, hold on. Stop. While we're talking about Chinese food. Yeah. My brother... I don't, I don't remember how we got to the conversation, but basically he said, I'm having Chinese food tonight. Or, no, he said, Yakuza Zero is making me want Chinese food. <laughs> it's a Japanese game. I was like, so a game literally set in Japan, not even just from a Japanese developer. <laughs> A game set in Japan is making you want Chinese. You're like, it's the closest we can get. And I was like, there's like three Japanese restaurants <laughs> in your area alone. <laughs> Not really. Not really. To be... Okay, what happened was I was in a Chinese restaurant. Like... This is way off topic. I sent my brother a picture of the menu and something. And I was like, Yakuza brought me here. And he's like, a Japanese game brought you to a Chinese restaurant? I was like, it's the closest we can get. And he goes... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so call. sorry. It's okay. So I go to Google like Japanese restaurants, and there's like two or three that pop up. I was like, oh, but still, <laughs> which I think is the literal number I sent to him. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's two or three. Which one doesn't really count because it's a uh, house of Kobe, and I don't think that's considered Japanese. It is. That's way loosely based. That that could be a debate. Now, Maki of Japan in the mall, that could be debated as not really Japanese. Japanese. that's just Asian cuisine. Yeah. Either way, I got some Chinese food in me, and it felt <laughs> real good. <laughs> it's a, because it's... in Yakuza, you can purchase, like, food to give you health. Fuck you. Yeah. It's almost like Final Fantasy in a way, but not as in-depth, of course. But, um, so, for example, in Yakuza, uh, you play multiple characters. I'm only on the second character for right now. And, um, like, you... It's an RPG, in my opinion. It's an action RPG. Because what happens is, is you can run through the city of Japan, or whatever, and... The there city are... of Japan. <laughs> God bless I'm it. so sorry. Uh, you know, just, just rock it. Just I, rock I, it. I, I have to tell you a side story. Like, <laughs> the last couple of places I've gone to, they like end up giving me alcohol before I leave their house. And like, does everybody just want me to be a raging alcoholic yeah. or something? Like... <laughs> And then I just poke and prod at you. Yeah, it's like it's hey. like I want to go sit in the dark, dark room. <laughs> I just want John to pick up my mantle from where I left off with my drug addiction and alcoholism. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, it's like the torch. Is there, right. ha- there has to be one living ray <laughs> with an alcoholic. Just... <laughs> Anyways, way off topic. <laughs> way off topic. So Yakuza Zero, like, um, so there will be you're walking through Japan. Whether it's a city, a state, or country, you can decide on your own. Um, You're in a district of Tokyo. Two yeah. different districts of Tokyo. Yeah. Um, there'll be, like, guys out there. Well, regular citizens, too. But, like, guys out there, like, hooligans, bikers. bikers, bikers um, there's a group called Men in Black, which I think is hilarious because I always, like, think of the movie. Uh-huh. You know, even though there's probably a... They think you're an alien. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and others, like, I can't remember all the stupid little, um... That's a good movie. Sorry. But what it does is, like, it traps you into this, like, area, and then there's people that come and, like, cheer you on while you're fighting, mm-hmm. which is funny because, like, even when you're in the darkest, deepest alleys, like, people show up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and you'll literally see just the bad guys there, and then all of a sudden to block you from running away from the fight... Like, there's, like, all of a sudden, eight people all Eight around. people that just show up. Like, there's, like, fuck. nobody there, but all of a sudden... But it's, like, super stylized. And the thing is, and Monica was saying, and I get her complaint. It's not really a complaint. It's, like, more of, like, a wish. But you have to read everything. So that could be, like, a negative. It, but it's, like... But we would never get that game. Yeah. It would be years from now before we got that yeah, game. Yeah, before... Because... There, it's Japanese, so everything is translated in English only through text. But here's the thing, to me, my opinion, and her, like, she kind of started buying into it. The story is so addicting. Yeah. It makes... I don't even like reading, because I gotta do it for work, you know, mm. all that happy shit. Um, the story is so addicting and so compelling. Even the stupid side stories, which we'll talk about here in a minute. It makes you read every drop of dialogue that there is. Yeah, and then... But then also the main missions, like, some of them really do... There's one I want to talk about, but I don't want to spoil it. Mm-hmm. I don't... I'll have to shut up, because it's, like, so far one of my favorite parts of the game was, like, the story was, like, really picking up, really picking up. Then something happens. Yeah. And then another thing happens, 
and then more story, and then it switches back to the other character. And you're just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then you hop into that character, and something crazy happens. And yeah. then you do something cool in the game, and then something crazy story-wise happens, mm-hmm. and you're like, fuck. And when I, I say this in the best of ways, because it doesn't take away from the story at all. But the side missions will trap you into the oh, deepest, yeah. darkest addiction you have ever found. Because, like, there will be times where I'm doing a story and I want to know what happens next. And then somebody will stop you. And they'll be like, excuse me, sir, or whatever, you know, they say. Uh-huh. And they're like, okay, let's see what they want. And it'd be something as, like, one example would be something as simple as, like, I need a boyfriend for the night. Yeah. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> well, and that one's awesome because she straight up is just like... Hey, you want to be my boyfriend? And he's like, "What? Isn't that moving a little too fast?" So then, yeah. I don't know what choice. Because then you have dialogue choices that you have to pick. Yeah. The one I threw at her was like, "Well, how about we get married?" And she's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Who's the one moving too fast?" Now? <laughs> yeah, we just. I think I went like normal on that. Well, anyway, so they do give you uh, multiple choices on some of them. I wanted to talk about my favorite side story mission real quick. Spoilers. Apologize. It's fairly. But my favorite mission is there's this line of people and they're going to a store. And I so you go to talk to each one of them and they want this game. It's like called AT1000, for example. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an like, old PC game because the game's set in the 80s, by the way. Yeah, it's set in the 80s. So it's like an old, it's like Oregon Trail. I'll just say Oregon Trail. And you get to the end of the line, there's this little boy. He's just like, I'm sitting here waiting for my game Oregon Trail. You're like, okay, you know, that's cool. You know, you go to do something. And then this bully steals the game from the kid. And you're like, oh, I'll get the game back for you, more or less. Like, the dialogue, the kid's like, oh, my God. He's like, all right, I'll go help you. So you go to (laughs) talk to the bully. Well, somebody else is stealing the game from him. So you you fight the bully. You beat the shit out of the bully. And you're like, all right, where's the game? You know, where's this at? Where's the Oregon Trail? And he's like, oh, that guy just stole it from me. You're like, damn it. So you go to to the next guy and you're like you're the guy who stole from the kid that stole from blah 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 you know what I mean and then somebody's attacking him when you show up so he beat the shit out of this other guy and you're like alright where's the game where's Oregon Trail he's like this guy took it from me yeah. <laughs> so at the end of it what happens is like I don't I'm not gonna spoil it just yes, yet spoil it. but it's his dad who yeah. ends up with the game and his dad's like I wanted to get my kid the game all along, blah, 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 blah. And you end up beating up his dad because you don't know it's his dad at the yeah. point. And, he, and you're like, and you're explaining the story to this guy. You're like, you took it from a kid who took it from a guy who took it from a video. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it goes through like four sections and it's just, you fight a guy, he tells you somebody stole it. And then you get to the end and like the last guy who has it is a Yakuza. Yeah. And you beat the shit out of Helm and like, he gives you the game back and he's like, He's explaining that, like, I wanted, I, I was just trying to get this for my son, mm-hmm. and he's like, but I don't want to take this away from another child. Yeah. And then the little boy runs up, and he's like, Dad, what are you doing? Yeah, Dad, hey. <laughs> and then your character, like, this isn't a dialogue option, he's just like, oh yeah, he helped me get the game back. Yeah, He yeah. covers for the dad, and like, the reason the dad wanted it so bad is because the mom left the dad, and... Playing games together is like a way for him to connect with his son and spend time with the son. And it's it's so so because it comes like it becomes like kind of like emotional in a way because you're you're like trying to help this kid, and then at the end you're like fending for the dad, be like, you know, he actually helped me get your game back. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. He's like, you know, I play these games. I might not know that much about them, but you know, yeah. (laughs) And the kid, remember, the kid explains. That, like, the reason he was trying to buy the game himself with his uh, allowance that he saved up mm-hmm. was because his mom was getting mad that his dad was buying, buying him, him stuff. Too, too much stuff. Yeah. And being, like, because he's a Yakuza. He's got money. Yeah, it's like dirty money. Yeah, so. Or not. <laughs> no, the Yakuza are all on the up and up. They're great. Best organization ever. <laughs> <laughs> Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. We're doing thumbs up. Forgetting we're not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is strictly audio cast, but we're like, yeah. Yeah, thumbs and up. I, like, speaking of, like, I have really, like, short thumbs, too. So, like, oh, every yeah? time I thought, yeah, my brother has a hitchhiker thumb. I don't know if you've ever seen those things. They're fucking freaky. It's like, what are you pointing at? Anyways. I feel like that, I feel like it hampers my ability to play games. 
No, because you're like a weird cyborg. So if no, like because a... I always end up like slipping up onto the yeah. sticks like this. So I'll end up playing like <laughs> that this. That doesn't work for audio at all. <laughs> my thumbs point up. Yeah. Like if you have your hand flat, my thumb points like back towards Not just towards up, me. but back towards them. <laughs> some some <laughs> sort of weird creature. It is weird. It's kind of strange. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, because you usually give a thumbs up, your finger's pointing straight up. His is like... You gotta, me, it's more like a Roman thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, I could go either way with it. It's yeah. Like, so, like, he would be the worst, like, Roman Empire guy, because he'd be like, <laughs> he'll go to give a thumbs up, but it looks like he's giving a thumbs down. They're like, which one is it? Do we kill this guy or not? All right, he's killing him. He's, he's like, killing everybody. What the hell? The cat did nothing. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but Yakuza is... It is, and I think when I did my little video thing where I lost it during the karaoke, which we which didn't is even a lot we, awesome, yes, yeah, yeah, we didn't even touch on the side other side stuff. On top of then and later in the game, both characters have two businesses they have to run, which is kind of where I stop right now. On which the I look forward, I, I look forward to doing that part of it. I don't like it. Why? I'm at the point like I got to the eye patch guy's business. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Yeah. But you could tell from the menus that he has a business as well. It's when beyond I, the cabaret that he runs? I can just tell you. It's it's really simple. And it's not even part of like the main story. Oh, okay. He basically... There's cabarets, the big cabarets. Yeah. Does he buy out the other one? No. There's oh. big cabarets. And then what start showing up in the 80s are called cabaret clubs. Which are like shrunk down cabarets. It's almost like... Ah. Um, uh, how do I put it? Because it's kind of like, remember in Goodfellas? Yeah. When they go to the the big bar, the Copacabana or whatever? Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a singer and everybody's all over the place. It's more like going from that to, like, more like a modern, like, strip club. Yeah. Kind of that size, mm-hmm. you know? Um, So, he, basically, this guy is getting run out of town by these, like, big players in the area. And the thing that annoys me is it's literally the same setup. There's four main head honchos who run, like, the entire businesses of the rest of the area. Four main honchos who run the rest of the cabaret clubs. So you're basically going to work for this guy pro bono to help him build back up his business to shut down the other four Mm -hmm. guys. Just like you're buying up real estate to shut down these other four guys, which are two different sets of four guys. Yeah. Like... My thing about that game, too, is, like, the second... Because you play multiple characters. But the second character, his intro, like, was so much cooler than the first one. That's what I was going to show you to sell you on the game if you weren't interested. Yeah, because, like, he's a manager of this club or cabaret or whatever. And there's, like, a customer, like, causing all this chaos. And, like, instead of kicking him out, like, there's a way that he avoids the guy and makes the guy try to fight him. But he's like, all right, I know who you are because he steals his business card in between of... Mm. You're not fighting him. You're, like, dodging his sh- everything yeah. he does. The customer's always right. The customer I'll is never, king. Yeah, the yeah. customer's king, and I'll never harm the customer. Yeah. So he gets it to the point where, like, he makes the customer, because he's a big pharmaceutical guy, pay for all the drinks for everyone. He's like, we can forgive this guy and not involve the cops because you, you don't want that information out there, do you, Mr... Ching from the pharmaceutical company, yeah. you know, and it's like, <laughs> and it's like, there's this awesome part where after he gets done, like, embarrassing this guy by making him, like, he's like trying to fight him, and you're just dodging all his attacks while trying to provide him, like, napkins and shit. <laughs> yeah, at the end of that, your character gets on his hands and knees and begs him and begs him, like, look, well, I, I, I hope I didn't ruin the evening for everybody and stuff, and like. Can we forgive him if he does this gesture? And he's so interesting. And that's what makes that whole twist I'm talking about. I don't even know when it's going to happen. Yeah. But into when you go into Yakuza 1, which the remake of Yakuza 1, they added like more content with that guy in it. Yeah. Because I guess he's in the first one and all through the series. See, I've never played the series at all. Like, this is my first hands-on with Yakuza. Yeah. And I'm like, now like I'm addicted. Like, I hope... Yeah. The only thing that could be bad is, like, my expectations are, like, at a certain level. I'm like, can Yakuza 1 keep up with that same, you know what I mean, same... Well, I... They... Like, when I say this is a remake, it's, like, ground up. Oh. From the ground up, 
the same structure, the same, like, style of combat. Like, they changed everything to make it in line with Yakuza 0 and Yakuza 6, which will come out in America, I think, in 2018. Yakuza 1 comes out in 20... Or this summer. I yeah. think it's this summer. And then, of course, you know, you got 2, 3, 4, and 5. Which 2, I believe, was still on PS2. 3, I played... It's really stiff. It's hard to go back to. So I almost feel like you play zero, you play one, you watch like story summaries for two, two three. three, and four was really fucking annoying. I hated four. Yeah. Because you know how you switch between the two characters? Yeah. In four, there's four different characters, and you play through their arc, switches to another character. You play through their arc, oh, switches. Yeah. So like all those upgrades, all the money, everything that you did doesn't carry over either oh that sucks yeah also a big tip for you i always have like you get 20 slots of like items i always have 15 stamina royales my stamina royales boost refill your health oh yeah and refill i've had to use that a lot with this this one boss guy um that i was fighting for the real estate agent like you go to because you go to the real estate agent guy that can talk to him, mm-hmm. and then one of his guys wants to fight you. Well, he's like, you can go meet with the boss, that's fine. And you uh, go there, and then you yeah. have to fight him or whatever. I had to use that a couple times for there, because like I wasn't as level as I probably should have been. <laughs> yeah, but like the Stamina Royale, like I don't know why the other health boost things are in there. Yeah. Because like your, what is it called? Your heat gauge is actually super important, because... Mm-hmm. The lower it is, the slower you are. Yeah. So there's no reason that if you're filling your health, you wouldn't fill your heat. And then also, let's say you have full health, but you need some heat. Stamina Royale does the same thing. It does the same thing. And it's only 15,000 yen. What? Which, when you're constantly walking around with millions, it's like... Yeah. That's, that's one thing I like about the game is like you feel like you're so rich because it's like... You, yeah. When you go around fighting, what happens, I think, is cool... When you beat up guys, like, money comes busting out of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, that's the thing. And you can get, like, combo bonuses and stuff on the way you, like, take them out and, yeah. sh- and stuff like that, you know? So you can pay attention to old school arc- arcade games, American and Japanese arcade games. Based on the high score in those games, you can tell where they're from. Because the super duper high score ones, those are from Japan. The ones that, like, go up to, like, 999. Yeah. Or, like, 9,999, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, those are American. Because in Japan, if you're like, you got a million points, you're like, oh, that's a lot of points, but that's not that much. Yeah, that sounds great, yeah. We tie things to our money. Yeah. So, like, in America, you know, you get a million points in an American game, you're like, holy fuck, yeah, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> you get a million points in a J- Japanese game, and it's like, eh, that's, yeah, that's, that's okay. okay. Yeah, and that's another thing that, I like, like we're schlobbing the knob on this game, but um, you can go inside arcade games. Like, they have arcade games built into Yakuza. Like, mm. I've played Space Harrier. I've played Outrun on that. Um, they have a claw machine, which I'm indifferent with, and you really don't need it. Oh, I guess you do to get some of the side stuff, but... One sub-story. Yeah, <clears throat> one sub-story. Well, two. There was another one I went... Well, that wasn't a sub-story. That was a side activity where I took a girl out on a date. Did you ever do the phone? You need to go to a phone place where you talk to girls on the phone. Yeah. It's absurd. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like, they turn it, it's not a serious shooter. Yeah. But it's like, they have like, they have like the things you want to ask them, mm-hmm. like on the screen and spinning around and like but hiding behind the other ones and they pop out and you have to load up your shot and fire it. And then he's like, Hua! and then he asks like, whatever you say, you know, like you sound really pretty or you're easy to talk to. And there's like a gauge where you don't want to creep her out, yeah. but you don't want to bore her. And then like eventually, and as this is going on, you have the words in the foreground and the background is a blurry image of a girl. Oh, so if you become successful, it becomes into a full picture or something. You start seeing the picture and it's like a Japanese girl in a bikini doing like, all the poses. sexual poses and stuff like and that. And it's like, and so you eventually get to the point where you go on a date with them. Oh, And so okay. I ended up taking 
a girl out on a date, and I've been trying to figure out how I'm supposed to call her back again. Because <laughs> it's like, you have her pager number now, you can call her. I'm like, how the fuck do I call her? Yeah, the, how do you page somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of There's strange. so much in this game. Yeah. So I definitely suggest to buy it. Uh, we talked about talking about it. Um, I say buy it for sure. It's if, a buy. You, if you rent it, you're going to get... Addicted to it. Well, you're going to get I one... got addicted to it just watching my brother play it and like hearing him laugh, <laughs> laugh his ass off. And the funny thing is it's like so over-stylized, but it's awesome in that way. Yeah. Like, everything you do is, like, even karaoke, like, to yeah. talk... Like, my brother did a video on it, but just to give another example, even karaoke, which is something you do at a bar, you know, they turned this guy into, like, he's jamming out in a full fucking band music yeah. video. It's, it <laughs> that starts parrot out, in the corner, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you start out just singing in the bar, and then, like, when the real hook comes into the song... Yeah. All of a sudden, he's like got playing a bandana the piano on him. and stuff like that, yeah, <laughs> and your buddy's like playing the like guitar behind you and shit. <laughs> yeah, so, with like bandanas on because it's so eighties too. The fucking sad song. He just keeps looking at a picture of this house. <laughs> yeah, and I can't speak Japanese, so, so you I have don't no know idea. What he's saying. But okay, and to be totally fair, there's only one thing in this game that is a bummer, and there's this like disco thing where you dance. Oh. It's the way that they've made the mini game. I think the, Zach's dog is having a nightmare or something. <laughs> um, the way that uh, they made the mini game, it's like I don't think it's broken. It just feels off. Yeah, it feels completely wrong. Because what will happen is it tells you to push triangle, but it, you have to push triangle within a certain square. And I swear, and I and I showed Monica where I would do it at that exact time, and you're supposed to space it out like a dance move. Yeah. And it won't hit when I hit it. And it says, like, either miss or bad. And it's just like, I'm doing, the, like... And so I put it on the hardest difficulty to make it quicker to see if, like, that was something, like, an issue. And I did get a better score, which is funny. Yeah. Because it was, like, tracking it better. But it's like, ugh, that's the only thing out of the whole game I don't but you, like. But you don't have to do it. You don't have to. Well, there is a side mission to it if you do it. Yeah, but if you fail it or you pass it, it's not going to make a difference in yeah. the side mission. Yeah. Like, it's more... But that's the only negative. If there's one negative, that's pretty much it for that. So you've been playing, because we, we're coming up in an hour, but I want you to talk about Neo real quick, because I don't think I'll get that for a while. Like, it's going to be a while till I get that. Which bums me out, because I loved being able to play Bloodborne alongside you, even though yeah. I had already beaten it before. See, that's what I think I should do with Neo. Wait till you beat it. So, like, when I go to play, but hey... <laughs> <laughs> See, but that's the thing. I'm already far enough ahead of you, and it's mission based. Yeah, that's that's what's really nice. Is like since it's mission based, you know, in, in Bloodborne you could travel to the different bonfires and stuff, but like since it's mission based, it's a lot more condensed. Okay, so what this game is is it's basically Bloodborne meets Ninja Gaiden meets fucking Diablo. Yeah, but it's samurai. Well, you're like playing Tincho. Tenchu, stealth assassin. <laughs> That's ninjas, not samurais. Though, to be fair, I just did a mission today that got me a full ninja outfit. Yeah. And you know how in Diablo you could transmogrify your armor? Character, yeah. And you can make your armor look like whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So I could have like the heaviest armor possible and then morph it into looking like ninja gear. So I could be like super armored That's but cool. run around as a ninja. <laughs> That's cool. My favorite part <laughs> about this game is that when you run with like I don't know how it does it with like spears and stuff, but if you have dual swords or one sword, when you run, he straight up runs like fucking Naruto. <laughs> nice. Like he, he like drags his, it and shit. He, yeah, yeah. He, he puts the swords <laughs> behind his back and he's like running like a Dragon like, Ball Z type thing. <laughs> yeah, with his head like tucked down. So that's basically what the game is. Um, but actually, there's a ton more depth to this game. Than any of the Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Lords of the Fallen, any of those games before it. Like, there's three different stances you can be in. There's a set t number of types of weapons, but there's loot like Diablo. So all the weapons have different, and that's not just Which I'm like highly interested in, by the way. And it's constant. Like you're constantly getting new gear, and it's not just all oh, right. This one does more damage, or this one does more. You know, protects me more. There's stat bonuses and stuff. Mm. And then as your familiarity grows with a weapon, yeah, 
Uh, so you basically, you know, like Call of Duty, you keep using a gun and like the gun level increase, goes up. Yeah. They have that on this game. Oh man, man, I might have to get it done. Okay. <laughs> so then you also because you have to understand Diablo three, how many hours I put in it, just because I I get addicted to like gearing shit up. Yeah, <laughs> you know what and I mean? it's and it's literally you feed weapons into other weapons, you forge weapons, you find like materials out in the world, you forge weapons, you can re-roll those. Like let's say you get a really strong sword, but you don't like the stat bonuses. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you can re-roll the stat bonuses on the weapon. So then... All right, I'm going to GameStop. We're ending the podcast? No. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's that's what really hooked me. Because I've been playing the, like, betas leading up. Yeah. The first, the alpha, I should say, the alpha that they did, the loot was really... It didn't have a lot of stats tied to it. It was a lot of, like, this one's 114 damage and... This adds 10 defense. Like, all the, like, armor, the stats were, like, tied to your main stats. So, like, you use this helmet, your strength and your heart goes up. You use these, uh, like, gloves, your magic and your spirit go up. So they ditched that, and for the, like, other beta, it was where they had the loot. But it didn't happen that often. Yeah. Okay, this last beta before launch that they just did, you're fucking getting loot all the time. And mm. you're... And the thing I love, like, Bloodborne, you have souls. Yeah. They're called Blood... Vi- blood blood echoes, Vials. Blood, yeah. blood Echoes. Blood Echoes, yeah. And Bloodborne, Souls and Dark Souls. Um, this game... And then that's your currency. That you buy upgrades, you buy skills, you buy weapon upgrades. Everything. Upgrade, yeah. everything. This game, you have fucking money, and you have your souls. Ooh. That way, you're focusing your souls on your character. It's called Emrita, Emrita, whatever. And it's, like, one of the main focal points of the story, like, how these things work. That's the other thing. This game has a story with cutscenes, and it's alternate history, which I love. Which, like, Man in High Castle. It's alternate history. Yeah. Resistance, you know, the Resistance series. Alternate history. So, you have... Your money, which you buy weapons with, you change the look of your weapons, all that. Your souls are for upgrading your fucking character. You know, you have money for other stuff. Yeah. And you have that. But then also, you can, you get your weapons, you know, your drops. You can uh, dismantle them to get the parts, just like in Diablo. You can sell them to get money. You can feed them into other weapons to make those weapons stronger. Um... You can change the stats on whatever, or you can make offerings to the gods, basically, and get souls for it. Oh, so you can sell them, more or less. Yeah, you can sell them for souls or cash or do any of the other things. But then also, if you're making those offerings, you're getting the souls, but then every once in a while, you'll get a free item out of it, too. Like, there's Uh, so much... And this is just the items I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah, you're like, I'm not even talking about the game. So, (laughs) remember in Borderlands 2... Where which is still one of my favorite games. You have your level and your unlocks and stuff, but then yeah. you had your badass rank. Yeah. This game has a badass rank system. Really? It's a prestige system, and it's two different ones, and it's challenges just like Call of Duty, where you do these certain things certain amount of times, and you unlock a prestige point. You get four choices, like your Kai increases, human versus enemy, you know, versus human damage, uh, fall damage, like... And then you click on one, that one you get, you get that bonus, and then a new different one pops up. Oh, okay. Just like the badass rank. So yeah. then you're upgrading your weapons and armor, you're picking up new weapons and armor, you're upgrading your stats, okay? You have a guardian spirit that protects you, gives you stat bonuses. Um, if you die, your spirit thing protects your uh, souls. Think, yeah. But then if, like, let's say you only have 200 there, while that spirit animal is over there protecting it, you don't have the bonuses from the spirit animal. So mm. you can then just call it back. Yeah. Um, then you had to haul ass to where your shit was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because then, like, the enemies can just pick it up and then, like, it decreases in its amount. Um, so you have all that. You have these little green guys that you guide back to the shrines. Mm-hmm. And those, you can increase your... 
there's like five different ones of those. They're Kodama blessings. It's like you're you pick up like more higher item drop rate, more healing item drop rate, uh, stuff like that. So there's that system, and then there's like five different weapon types. Then there's also like oh my god yeah <laughs> okay but and I know it sounds crazy yeah but then there's also like but for, it's manageable yeah then for each of the like um, weapon types there's move unlocks and some of those are tied to specific stances so if you're like if you're a dude who likes to wield a giant axe and do a high stance so you're doing high damage mm-hmm. um, and you like to protect yourself and then do high slower damage you can do that or if you want a lower stance you can do that there's moves tied into that then there's a ninja system ninjutsu or whatever where you have different skills you unlock and things you can craft like oh my god you know how like in bloodborne it was like a pain in the ass to get like those papers that like set your sword on fire or set it like have it lightning those you can make and you have like a stock amount like just like your elixirs or whatever you can spawn with those already made oh okay same with like shurikens yeah and then also the ranged weapons in this game a lot easier to use like really simple system like if you're sneaking up on an enemy you're at a decent distance you can actually pop people from pretty far away with a rifle or yeah. a bow if you have just a red circle it's gonna hurt them if you have a red and the yellow Generally speaking, it's going to kill them. Oh, so that's cool. So the and weapons actually have... Yeah, and it's fast, too. Because that was my issue with some of the older games, like Bloodborne. It's like I would shoot somebody and they wouldn't always like die. You yeah. know what I mean? In Bloodborne, that was used for your countering. Yeah. So they'd go to swing, you'd pop it. Shoot it real quick. Yeah. And then you'd get a visceral kill. This game, you unlock a skill where it's like you can be guarding. Like, it starts out... They swing at you, you hit triangle and knock their sword away, and then you, like, do a visceral attack. Yeah. Then they get it to where you can do it while you're guarding. hmm So then, while you're guarding, they go to do it, and you hit triangle, and, like, I have dual swords, so I, like, s- go like this with this. This is a... I don't care. This it's is for my brother. Yeah. He, like, flings their sword up, so they, like, go to fall back. Yeah. And then he buries... Stabs them in the middle, yeah. With both swords. Oh, my God. What I kind of wonder, like, I wonder if you could, like, go through the whole game as, like, a gunman, like a wild gunman. Like, that would be cool to me. Not like I, I feel like that's real practical. <laughs> I want to say no. You, c- okay, you wouldn't be able to, I want to say no, because you wouldn't be able to the first two missions. Yeah. Because there's just not enough ammo. Yeah. And you also can't carry that much, but... Before you came over, I had just unlocked the ability to carry now 15 arrows and 9 bullets, I think. So it makes it more feasible. Yeah, but then also, they're dropping a lot more regularly in the level I'm in. Oh, okay. But it's it's one of those things where, like, I understand, like, your hesitation, but there's so much about this game that, like, is right up your alley. Yeah. That is, like, it's that Diablo thing where, or Call of Duty, where... There's never been a second... There's been times where I played Bloodborne. And I played for 30 minutes, and I fuck up, and I lose my souls. And I didn't make any progress. You know what I mean? It was just a completely wasted experience, which you talked about on the podcast when we talked about uh, Game of the Year. You were like, I kind of like that, but I kind of didn't like that feeling like... I'm like, doing good, I make one bad mistake, then I make another, I lose my souls, that was a wasted 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. This game, because there's so many other systems, and there's money, and there's loot, and there's the prestige... You don't feel like you ever wasted anything. Never. Like, and I lost, like, a bunch of souls yesterday. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch. But in that time, when I was killing all those guys to, like, get those souls... Yeah. I got, like, ten prestige points, because, like, I was looking through the challenges and what I could do for that level. Like, because there's a section where you're on these rooftops... And so there's guys down below. And so I was doing a bunch of drop attacks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's a lot of yokai. And then there's like, I didn't even talk about that. Like, you know, on Bloodborne, you attack to get your health back. Like you get hit. Your health like has like two sections to it. How much health you have, which is where it's going to be unless you can get back that health. Mm -hmm. They have a similar system 
but instead of being tied to health, you have your key, which is like your stamina. Yeah. Let's just call it stamina. So what you do is every time you attack, you hit R1 at a certain point. It's like timing based, like active reload in Gears of War. You pop it. Yeah. And then you get a bunch more of your stamina back quicker. Oh, that's so that cool. way you can like go fucking wailing on a go dude, ham. <laughs> pop it at the right time, get a bunch of your bar back and just go back. Just keep him. going. Yeah. And that's, and then I got an ability that allows me to dodge to make that happen. So I go da 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 da, dodge to the side, refills da 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 da, and I'm <laughs> so just, just like making up. shiatsu. It's like da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> I could talk about this game for way too long. <laughs> yeah. And that like I'm almost at the point where I'm like, you got to make a video of it now. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm almost at the point where I'm going to be like, hey Emily, I'm going to buy John a copy of this game because <laughs> it's not just for him; it's for me. It's for you. Yeah. But it, it they're like. Maybe I'll hit up a game store tomorrow because, like, we're talking about going to Michigan City because I gotta find a shirt thing for our wedding and everything. And I'm like, I might just get it from the gaming store out there because call ahead, like, see or, if they well, have if it. You're gonna walk in. You might as well walk in. I guess not a lot of copies. Like, I had to go to Video Palace. Oh, to get it. GameStop didn't have it oh, here that's in weird. Portage. We'll see what happens. But we're hit. We hit our hour, so we're gonna do Sorry. final thoughts. No, so, no, that's fine. That's kind of what we were talking about, anyways. So good. Um, so, final thoughts. You can go first. You can even extend your Neo conversation if you want. Well, though, <laughs> my final thoughts, we talk a lot about Yakuza mm -hmm. and how awesome it is and how much we're both enjoying it. And I feel like that's my statement about Neo is, like, I've had Zelda. I had Bay Bayonetta 2. Like, I just got a Wii U. And nothing was really pulling me away. Like, when I had time to really play a game, un you know, not distracted, I was playing Yakuza. Neo's the first game to do that in like two weeks. And yeah. Like, I'm gonna I I'm gonna force myself to keep playing Yakuza because I want to know what happens in the story. But like, all day at work today, Neo's on my brain. <laughs> nice. Like, what do I need to do? I was like, you're like welding, but then like chopping it. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I look down, my fucking machine's destroyed, and like my hands glowing red. And I'm like, ah. And I'm like, where's my guardian spirit? Um. So, that. That's my final thought outside of I have Breath of the Wild pre-ordered for March 3rd. March? And I guess Amazon with the Prime, it's saying that it's going to show up day of. Yeah, I would hope so. But it's like they give free two-day shipping, but like, does that mean it's free day of shipping to Indiana, not like a metropolitan area? I don't know. I don't know how that we'll works. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But I'm looking forward to that game as well. Uh, my final thought, uh, turns out everything I want or ever look for gets delayed for some reason oh fuck <laughs> for some reason gets delayed or canceled i'm gonna back up you go into all that oh okay i just want to see your perspective on the movie and the south park yeah so south park fracture butthole was put on delay again or something i'm not as mad about that one to be honest with you because i haven't finished stick of truth yet it's not coming out till 2018, not 2017. Oh, well, all Before right. Before April 2018 is what they said. Oh, well, that's... Uh, over a year. Uh, that's great. Okay, well, fuck. Okay. <coughs> well, that sucks. Big... Okay. Well, I was looking forward to playing that. Maybe by the time it comes out, I probably won't. <laughs> it's just a through. <laughs> I just probably won't care. Um... Stick of Truth is still fun, though. I, I'll probably rent it at that point, to be honest with you. Um, Friday the 13th, yeah. the movie, got canceled. I guess they're not doing it anymore. When the director was set up, everything was pretty much ready to go. Um, it wasn't necessarily going to be a reboot. It was actually going to be a backstory of Jason and his mom, which everybody kind of knows the lore from it in the movies but i would a lot i would have loved to see that i don't know why i'm a huge horror nut as you know and as people have listened to this know i love friday the 13th nightmare on elm street this would have been a full-on story uh basically jason not knowing how to swim <laughs> which is fine did you like the rob zombie halloween reboots no that's what those are it wasn't going to be by Rob Zombie, though. That's true. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Sorry not to put, you know, it would have been by somebody else. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, but it's just, I mean, 
and, and their justification for it is because they remade the ring that nobody really asked for because the ring isn't perfect but it was fine for what it is minus the remake they remade the ring lost a bunch of money because they fucking released it right by john wick and then they released it right by uh wait it already came out yeah it's already i didn't out. even know that movie was coming yeah out. i don't go see a lot of movies yeah i know what movies are coming out yeah well, they released it right by John Wick, and they released it by a uh, Lego Batman movie, which is going to be huge. And also, like, they just, it just was. It just was. And they're like, weird. they lost a bu- bunch of money on it. And it's just, it's like, I'm at the point where I'm just like, fuck you, like, get your shit together. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I, I feel so bad because, like, everything that John's looking forward to is getting fucked like jerked around sorry i'm trying not to cuss that much but it's like it's getting just plugged it's like i'm looking forward to friday the 13th game that might not come out to 2020 like there'll be like 20 moons we'll learn how to fucking land on fucking mars before the movie comes out or that game comes out friday the 13th the movie supposed to come out canceled completely not gonna exist basically Mm -hmm. and then I tried the South Park game, got myself into it, excited about the one that was supposed to come out this March, I think. Or... It was supposed to come out December 6th. Yeah, December time frame. I don't know why I And then March. it got moved to I guess the March, second you quarter. Said, yeah. And then, and now it's gotten moved on to, like, next year. So it's like... Uh, Here's a silver lining for you, though. Ton of great games. There is a lot of good stuff I'm playing right now. Yeah. <laughs> later this... Well... But you have to understand, it's just like... I would have loved to see a Friday the Thirteenth like movie about. It's like you already know, but it would have been cool like to see a director's point of view, like how that hall came together. But like, you know what I mean? Halloween. You uh, can't base Nightmare on Elm Street. That remake I didn't like. The other Friday the Thirteenth remake they did. You never saw that one? I think I did. I just don't remember it. It was terrible. Was it? Uh... Texas Chainsaw Man. Oh, yeah, you like that. I didn't like the tain- the one with uh, Jessica, Jessica Biel. Biel. I it's guess there's like another I, remake. I don't... Yeah, there is. Yeah. I don't like it, but it's fine. That makes sense. Like, I, I'm i horrible when it comes to horror movies. Like, God, this is my final thought. Sorry. Um, but we'll talk hor- more horror movies maybe later down the line. I, I kind of wanted to anyways. But final thought... Just, I've learned not to get excited about anything. (laughs) And the worst is, like, work-wise, I've been having a rough week, so it's just like, fuck. (laughs) You know what I mean? Just let it happen. So, that's it. Are we going to do the drums? How are we going to do this? Do you want the no or the drums? What do you want? What do you want the uh, audience to do, John? (laughs) (laughs) Let's see. Uh, I want you to like, share, and subscribe. No!